The world of marketing and PR has turned into quite the frenzy, and it's not easy to navigate the ever-changing landscape. Join me in my journey to learn from the best, as some of the world's top marketing and PR professionals share their stories on ways you can harness these changes to grow your brand. It's time to fuel the frenzy. Hello and welcome to the Fuel the Frenzy podcast and obviously our Facebook live video podcast. It's great to be here again. I always get excited by our guests. We have some phenomenal guests um, on our show and we have another really good one today. So welcome to Carlos Hidalgo. Um, Carlos, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Appreciate it. Well, I'm excited to have you on the show. You're going to bring a different dimension, I think, a little bit to the conversation today. Um, because there's a real customer experience thread which is going to be talked about in the whole kind of marketing B2B journey, which I think is going to be wonderful for a lot of our listeners. But Carlos, why don't, can you just do me a favor and introduce yourself, give a little bit of background to who you are and your company? Sure. Uh, Carlos Hidalgo, I reside here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. My company is Vision CX. And we're a company that's really dedicated to helping our clients enable, equip, and empower their organization to deliver customer experience, primarily on the B2B side. And uh, we work, uh, there's many different avenues we, uh, we, we erect for our companies to, and our clients to start down that customer experience journey, including demand generation strategy, content strategy, organizational assessments. And so myself, I've been in B2B marketing roles for well over 20 years, uh, on the client side with McAfee and BMC software, Mm -hmm. started an agency in 2005, which is based in Atlanta, Georgia. Left that company in February of this year and started Mm -hmm. VismCX. So I've been doing this for a while. Very good. What was the company in Atlanta, Georgia? Annuitus. They're Annuitus. a demand generation okay. focused company. Okay. Very good. Okay. That's where we are, Atlanta, Georgia. Yes. My accent, you can just tell, can't you? That's where <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, uh, very good. So tell me, customer experience, how did you get, you know, how did you get excited about, I mean, customer experience is an important piece, but what led you on that path for customer experience? You know, over the last 12 years when I was working with my former agency, as we talked with clients and as we helped them on their demand generation strategy, one of the things that kind of always bothered me, if you will, was it was always focused on net new, let's get the logo, let's acquire the new company. And then the question was, so what happens after that? Uh, about that 90% of customer lifetime value happens after the sale. You have to start to say, all right, yes, new logo acquisition is important, but what about retention, customer improvement, customer success? Mm -hmm. How are we delivering that? The consumer side has been obsessed with this for a long time. In B2B, we're just starting to wake up to the fact. So when I had the opportunity to start a new agency, rather than going to a very narrow niche like demand generation, I wanted to explore the whole idea of customer experience. Very good. Um, so what, I mean, you know, we've been learning the B2B world, which is a world I, I spend a lot of time in, um, you know, we're learning a lot from our B2C counterparts and we're bringing that, which is great. And we should have done that a long time ago, but we're learning from them. And I think we're now getting better at Mm -hmm. pleasing our customer and, and and pleasing them before they even know they need to be pleased. But what, what challenges do you think, um, there are in play for B2B companies to adopt this customer experience kind of mindset because, and it, and it, and it runs all the way through marketing um, and, yes. uh, and, other, and other divisions too. But, you know, wh- what do you think is the biggest challenge for B2B companies associated to it? Well, I think there's a host of challenges. I think number one, it's a skill set. Uh, marketing is changing so fast on the B2B side due to an ever-changing, sophisticated, complex customer, mm-hmm. which is taking longer to buy, adds more people to the buying process. Sometimes you're not even able to talk to the end user of your product or service during the sales cycle. So we're constantly seeing a shift of roles and personas that are involved in a full customer arc or in a full life cycle. To get the marketing skill set to respond to that, I go back to early in my career Mm -hmm. when marketing was responsible for Pantone color schemes and logos Mm -hmm. and ordering shirts for events and uh, tchotchkes at the trade show. Mm -hmm. 
we've advanced so far beyond that. Yeah. We're literally, we're being asked to be revenue generators for our company. So I think that's a big challenge. I think the challenge of uh, just patience. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is you have executives that have unrealistic expectations uh, that are being placed on marketing. Mm -hmm. of, I need it now. I need it quickly. Mm -hmm. I need it done. Um, so that bleeds into the idea and the challenge of change management. We truly have to change the culture, the culture around marketing departments and B2B organizations in general that say it's not just about bringing the customer in. As you said, it's about pleasing our customer at every stage of that journey, which, again, dovetails back in the skill set is you got to know the journey. You've mm -hmm. got to understand how to detail that journey. And so I think those are some of the – those are at least for me three of the top challenges mm -hmm. that I see in B2B organizations. Mm -hmm. So somebody – and I, I know a lot of our listeners get very involved in the whole content creation, the storytelling, and are responsible for um, – you know, trying to immerse the prospect and and the and the um, customer in understanding the brand story and how that how that impacts them. So, for customer experience, how does that align with content generation? I mean, how do we, I, I, how do we dovetail the two so they work they work together? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm asked a lot of, can can you help us devise a content marketing strategy? And typically, my first question is, what is your content going to be used for? And what I really mean by that is what stage of the customer journey are we trying to develop content for? So if it's brand, if we want them to engage with our brand, then we do have to tell a story. We want to we want to convey to them what does my brand stand for? What is my organizational promise to you mm -hmm. as a potential customer? If I move into I want to create content for demand generation, that's more conversational content where now you've identified I have a problem, I'm in a buying cycle. Mm -hmm. Part of the role of my content to produce a good buying experience, which is part of the customer experience, is to educate you on the depth and breadth of your problem, either qualitatively or quantitatively. And so I can do that through content, but so many organizations instead are, hey, buy my product, get mm -hmm. on a demo. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to understand the enormity of my problem or the scope of my problem. Once I've bought something, then it's that customer improvement or customer success content. And first, it's just addressing, hey, welcome to the family. Welcome to our company. This is how we're going to set your expectations. And this is the expectations you can expect from us. And then we move on from there to try to create customer advocates. And that's a specialized piece of content mm -hmm. where we're now including their voice into our content to speak about the experience they're having with our brand. Mm -hmm. So the first question they really need to ask is, what am I creating content for? Because to just create content, we've been doing mm -hmm. that for the last five years, yeah. according to the research, and we're mm -hmm. not progressing any further in terms of ROI. Mm -hmm. So, so it comes down to the the tone of the content and the sentiment of the content, the words being used in the content. Like that's when you're talking about customer experience, it's like how how you are talking to people, how you are explaining things. It's is that is that right? Am I is it is it much more than that? Is it even how well, and how you're sharing things and where, and giving people things where, wherever they are on their content cycle? I mean, it's a whole combination it, of things. It is. Yeah. It is all of the above. Yeah. It is the tone. So I know you've had uh, my colleague and good friend, Brian Carroll, who's mm -hmm. talking about empathy. So if I can be empathetic with you and say, hey, I understand your problem and let me help you. I, I was with a client the other day who said we want to have the, almost a fatherly tone mm -hmm. to our content to almost digitally put our arm around our prospects and tell them it's going to be OK. Yeah. So that that is a tone of content, but it's also delivering that content aligned to where they are in their customer journey whether they're in the buy cycle, they've already become a customer, or they're just engaging with our brand. And then as you just referenced, it is about what type of asset or what type of channel I'm going to use. So me personally, I, I'm not going to take the time to read a four to six page white paper. Mm -hmm. um, I'll watch a two minute video mm -hmm. if it's informative to me and where I'm at in the cycle. Yeah. But um, so so understanding that content consumption pattern and the behavior and the preference is also vitally important. Yeah. And and I think that's but even that is still a challenge for people understanding what to serve people at the different point of time in that buying cycle. So Absolutely. there's challenges before we even get to the fact of, you know, and how now do you deliver that great customer experience at that point in time? 
Right. So, uh, mm. Right. And, and, and I think part of that is just going out and asking your customers. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm a little shocked every time I speak when I ask how many marketers are out there talking to talking. their customers. Yeah. It's less than 10% who raise their hand. Yeah, I know. And so we have to go out and ask and say, what kind of content do you prefer? Because mm -hmm. that's going to change depending yeah. on the role they serve in the organization. Yeah, yeah. And where do you like to find that content? Where do you go? Right. I mean, there are many questions. And it amazes me how many con uh, marketing campaigns are created without a research foundation. It's like you're yes. shooting in the dark. Um, so, so your approach is you, you do all of that, but you add this layer of customer experience to it. So it's like a differentiator, surely, to your offering. It's like not, not only are we going to create great content um, and we're going to give you an opportunity to engage with the buyer on the different, we're going to do it in a way which is going to exceed their expectations. Abs absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And then let's not just look at that in <laughs> isolation. Let's so, for instance, if it's a demand generation strategy, mm -hmm. let's look at it upstream is how is that being tied into your brand and is there a consistency from the story to the conversation? Mm -hmm. And then what are you going to do once you do acquire that person as a customer? Mm -hmm. What does that engagement look like? And what is that going to do for your brand and to further drive your brand promise within that audience? So that's the approach we take. We always look at it within a full arc of yeah. customer experience. Yeah, very good. So I know you've had some interesting projects where you've helped some companies, you know, kind of change their mindset on marketing mm -hmm. and on the customer experience. Maybe you can kind of talk me through a couple of those examples. Yeah, we worked with uh, probably one that stands out because I just had a conversation with their uh, former mm -hmm. head of marketing is, um, uh, as I mentioned, the skill set, we went into an organization and they were in a very old state industry of printing. And they realized that the, they were not going to grow just doing things the same old way they had done before. So they started to bring in some techn technology offerings to their audience. And rather than saying, hey, we're going to just go conquer the universe, they started small. But one of our mandates was to come in and really help educate and enhance the skill set of that organization. And it was, for me, it was so exciting to go from kickoff meeting, where you got a lot of questions, a lot of quizzical looks, to a final delivery of strategy and into an implementation where the light bulb started to go off. And then in talking and keeping in touch with the, the VP who ended up uh, moving on from that organization, he repeatedly says, you know, that time that you guys worked with us, that time where you came in and enhanced our skill set, literally transformed the way that I view marketing and that I view engagement. Mm -hmm. so, so what kind of things did you... You know, change this content. Oh, we're losing some connection there. Hoping you're still there. Can... I'm, I'm okay, here. Okay, you're still there. Good. Um, can you give me some examples of then, of, of like things that you brought to the table, which, which changed the way that, you know, they provided a great experience? Yeah, I think fundamentally, first and foremost, we brought some <laughs> uh, hard-hitting industry research. Mm -hmm. um, that challenge their assumptions on how their buyers are buying, that challenge the assumptions on how they were selling. Mm -hmm. um, we use some of their own data to say, based on industry research and industry benchmarks, you're not a best-in-class organization. Mm -hmm. We started to look at some of the measurements, and when we started to ask questions and you got the really good question, we don't know. So we, we, we kind of gently, it, it sounds like we were a little harsh, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we applied some tough love, if you will, mm -hmm. where we said, let's take a look at what this, what you're currently doing and let's ask the honest question, is it working? There's a reason you brought us in. Yeah. Um, and we did have some detractors. We had people who felt a little uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but, um, as part of that too, we also wanted to look for the bright spots mm -hmm. and say, what is working well and how do we transform and build change using those positive things as a springboard rather than go scorched earth and start over. So we brought the research to bear and then we brought a different model. And rather than saying, let's go across the organization and transform every area or every line of business, we started small and said, let's pilot this in an area where we know is we will get some good uptake. And mm -hmm. so we use that as a proof of concept for the rest of the organization. Right. Very good. Okay. And so I know, um, you know, in some form, you know, there's technology plays a role in improving mm -hmm. the customer experience. And in some respects, though, there's also a conversation where technology, you know, dehumanizes 
the connection with our customer. So, but I, I think I think you're quite you're an advocate of technology in improving a cust- the customer experience. Is that is that correct? I am. I yeah. think it starts. I think it starts with the data and mm-hmm. understanding what we have and where it sits in the systems. I am not a fan of let's go buy technology to improve the customer experience without having that strategic layer. Mm-hmm. I believe technology enables a strategy. Mm-hmm. It doesn't produce one or deliver one on its own. Mm-hmm. And and what are some examples of technologies that you've suggested get implemented to improve the customer experience? Well, I think that standard, you know, if you're just going to say basic, mm-hmm. so having some kind of automation on the marketing side mm-hmm. where you can automate the dialogue, mm-hmm. automate the storytelling, and then a basic CRM on the sales side, which requires sales user adoption mm-hmm. to be effective. Um, I've also seen personalization uh, technologies like a Triblio that can be yeah. very effective. And, yeah. and on the B2B side, we want personalized content. We want our uh, messaging to be personalized. Yes, um, I think I think one of the things that is going to, that I'm hoping I see a lot of uptake on the B2B side, and it's a rather new area, but our customer data platforms, which takes all of your data across multiple systems and houses it and really gives you an intelligent view yes. mm-hmm. of who your customers are rather than trying to pull from multiple systems and make sense of it manually and also allows us to do some analytics and really gives us that full end-to-end customer view and so having that cdp that sits on top of those other technologies can be very valuable yeah i agree and and, and we're finding now with some of our customers uh, talking you know on what you just touched on is that you know, there, there has been, I mean, research is still very great to get proprietary data, but a lot of these um, brands are sitting on their own data, aren't they? And they yes. can really extract that data, and that, that already is very telling on, um, you know, what is going on with their customers, uh, and it's something they can really speak to. Uh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I think it's one of the most valuable it's one of the most valuable yet underused yeah. assets, mm-hmm. and obviously, and and honestly, one of the most neglected assets an organization has. Mm-hmm. the The other thing, getting back to our content discussion in terms of technology, is having some kind of content technology that allows for the development of a content hub, like a Lookbook HQ or an Uberflip, something like that. Because now I, it enables me to kind of binge on my content at my speed, mm-hmm. and it just presents the content in a much better way for the end user. So I think there's a host of technologies out there that can be used, but mm-hmm. you hit on something that's important is it all starts with the data. Yeah. And that's, that, that's what should inform our strategy first and foremost. Yeah. And like you say, and a lot of the times they have that data themselves. This is the whole discussion around big data and how is it actionable? Well, it's sitting there. It just sometimes needs to be kind of combed through and understood and, and used to build strategies from. Um, uh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. It is actionable. We just have to activate it and take care yeah. of it like any other asset. Yeah, exactly. So um, so what do you think? I mean, the, you know, there's always that question and, and, I, and every brand is different because the customer can be very different. But what what have you seen in your line of work? Which content works? I mean, I, again, I know that's a bit of an open ended question because, like I said, there's different content for different people. But um you know, it, there's so much content and, and it's being diluted and it's, it's getting lost. And, you know, we're having conversations with brands around more immersive content, the augmented reality type, you know, even holograms, like immerse me in something new and allow me to discover and explore and at the, let the brand tell the story. I mean, what, what are you seeing um, that you think is going to be impactful? Yeah, I, I think I, hmm. yeah, I think content that does deliver an experience, and there we because of our technology and the advancements we have in that, we have the ability to create a better experience around content, um, as you just described. I think prescriptive content. Um, hmm. As a buyer, I'm always looking, or as a customer, I'm always looking to improve in my role and my function. So if I find content that helps me do that, if I find content that helps me perform better in my job or in my role, I'm going to consume that. And research would show that. Demand Gen Report recently published a content preferences survey that shows overwhelmingly buyers are wanting um, prescriptive content. Educational in the same way is help educate me in the market mm-hmm. what's happening. You know, we're so busy in our role. So if I can have a vendor or somebody who's doing some research and then lastly, I think just voice of the customer. I want to know what my colleagues are doing. So having those advocates who speak on your behalf, having advocates who Mm. can write, having customers who can blog for you or Mm want to blog and tell their story. I think more and more we're seeing that peer to peer 
plays such a vital role in brand loyalty, in the purchase decision, Mm -hmm. and even brand engagement. Mm -hmm. I want to see your customers talk about you. And quite honestly, I want to hear the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because if you tell me that everything was was all good, I know that's too good to be true. So that's that authentic content coming in, isn't it? It's like, yeah, I want to, like you say, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because no one is perfect. No brand is perfect. And, um, uh, but yeah, hearing those customer stories is so important. Um, it's interesting because you, on that point, we have a customer where, you know, we do PR for them and actually the media don't even want to speak to the customer anymore. They just want to speak directly, um, to their customers. You know, and they're at a point in time where they've really established themselves that their customers are so willing to talk on their behalf to the media. You know, that's where you start to see storytelling really come alive when you're no longer having to tell your own story. Yes. And, you know, an an area that's kind of nailed that, uh, I will say good nonprofits have got nailed that a long time ago, where instead of going out for money, from your donor base, Mm -hmm. just go tell the story of the life change that you're bringing to people that you're supporting. And so if we can adopt that approach, which I I like the words you used, Mm -hmm. authenticity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really, really important. So we are all humans at the end of the day, whether it's a B2B, it doesn't matter. We are trying to engage with an individual at the end of that connection point. And it's, um, and we all have emotional needs, even when we're buying making business decisions there is an emotional need somewhere there you know Mm -hmm. i need to i need to do well in my job i need to get promoted i just want you know i need to make this a safe decision there's there's something emotive in there i'm buying it for a reason and you've got to appeal to people um and they need to be able to trust you so i think authenticity is very very important it's such an interesting area i love the fact you add that customer experience layer to the marketing strategy and and i don't hear that talked about very often I don't you know I interview quite a lot of people and I haven't seen that alignment we see customer experience being something which is tends to be talked about um I can't say really more in a silo but I haven't heard it really fit into the marketing strategy as much as you're talking about I think that sounds really good and very well, important. I, I, pre- I appreciate the affirmation. Yeah. Um, again, I think a lot of CEOs or CMOs, especially in that mid market, mm. are are getting that mandate, and they're with everything else they have on their plate. Mm-hmm. They're now saying, "Okay, now I have to deliver this end end customer experience. Yeah. What does that look like?" Yeah, yeah, it's a challenge. So, um, well, this has been a really interesting conversation, Carlos. If um, any of our listeners would like to get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to reach you? Yeah, they can visit our website, which is vismcx, V-I-S-U-M-C-X dot com. Mm-hmm. They can email me at carlos at vismcx dot com, mm-hmm. or they can uh, hit me up on Twitter, which is at C-A Hidalgo, and that's H-I-D-A-L-G-O. Okay, very good. So, um, well, good luck with the business. It sounds like you're really onto something there. It's, it's Like I said, there's a nice differentiator to, about what you're offering. I love that. Um, B2B brands need that. So um, I appreciate you joining the show today. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you having me. Okay. Bye-bye.